um, our wonderful uh, video, video uh, technician, Larry Hearn, uh, tells me that there are nine foreign countries that are tuning in to our sermons from YouTube. Yeah. And, and, and from states throughout, uh, states throughout the United States. So uh, welcome to all of you. We're so glad you're here with us today. All right. You know, I actually meant to ask uh, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. how he wanted to be introduced uh, before the first service, and I forgot. And then I got busy during the second service, and I forgot then too. So <laughs> here's the thing. I know he wrote a book uh, called uh, The Five Levels of Attachment some from some Toltec wisdom that is his tradition that he grew up in because he is the son of Don Miguel Ruiz who wrote The Four Agreements. And, you know, we've worked very frequently with the four agreements here, and it's really up-leveled a lot of our lives to understand how those four agreements work in our lives. Yes. And so that's good. That, uh, that's good. I'm glad you know all that. That's important. But here's what happened to me during the first service. During the first service, I had the experience of listening with my heart in a way I've never listened to anybody in my life before. Yeah. He has a message that is pure love. That song set it up so beautifully. So will you join me in welcoming Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi, my neighbors. I live just up the road. My name is Miguel Ángel Jr. And it's just a name to describe this living being that is me. My dad named him, me after himself, which is an expression of love, of course. Um, I, I was sitting in the, the teen program's director's office um, between uh, services, and I saw a little fly, uh, poster about Einstein talking about how everything is energy, and that if you want to change, all you have to do is tune in to that frequency, and change just happens, because that's how energy does. It's not philosophy. It's it's physics. I love that. I loved it so much I just sat there reading it because it's truth. In physics one, one of the first lessons, there needs to be an energy to move an object. An object only moves with a burst of energy. And I look at my hand and this is energy. If you've ever seen someone pass away, there's that moment where even if they're laying on the, on, the, on the bed, and I remember my uncle who passed away in front of me, laying in the bed with all my cousins and my aunts and just sitting there, he was there. And then even though he was unconscious, my uncle was there. And then when that last beeping sound and that last breath came, an interesting thing happened. My uncle went from being this living being and his body changed into an object. If you've ever seen anyone pass away, you know that interesting moment that happens. All of a sudden you look at this individual and it's, it becomes an object like this. Which means that for as long as there's life, I am this living being that moves this body, this is the energy. So when we're holding a beautiful baby, like the way I held my son and my daughter in my arms, that moment of watching him and her breathing, holding with such love because I'm falling in love so much. Because I can see this beautiful being being the pure potential that he and she can be. 
can be a doctor, it can be a lawyer, it could be a carpenter, it could be anything. Life is limitless without potential, with potential to go in any direction in life. And just like that child, that's my son and my daughter, I was once in my father's arms as well, in my mother's arms, and they thought the same thing. Of course, as life progressed, you know, we go through life, we learn things, and this potential starts to slow down and close off based on what we know, based on what we think, especially those thoughts that are limiting, and all of a sudden our choices seem to diminish, especially with what I can be, to the point where I'm so attached to a belief that the only thing I can see is one choice, one thing, and I've got no other choices in life, and I'm forced to live like that, completely forgetting that I'm still that child, even though I'm 37 years old, I am still that same potential that I was, and I still am to this very day, because I am life. The question is, when did I forget? When did I forget this moment? When did I forget Somewhere across the line of my life, I learned a limiting belief, a limiting thought. I can't, I can't, I shouldn't. Those thoughts that limit my full potential. I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not. I can't. For as long as there is life in this body, the truth is everything is possible. Because there is life in me. There is life as the expression of God. I am pure intent that's evil. <laughs> to dance. <laughs> All that required to do that for me is to say yes. yes. And to do it in front of a huge audience. <laughs> Hello, everyone over there. <laughs> I am pure potential because all that I require to do something is to say yes. 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 With every yes I give, something will be manifested yes. for every no. Something won't. If you see it from that point of view, yes and no is the manifestation of my intent. It's the way I use this energy called life. I move because I say yes. If I say no, thou shalt not be done. My no is just as powerful as my yes because at the core of it, is that same energy that allows me to create, that allows me to love, that allows me to say, <sighs> a thought is a very powerful thing indeed. Because in that thought, in that belief, in that idea, it allows me to perceive life. And based on what I perceive, I take action. I say yes based on what I see. So in my filters of what I know, there are beliefs that allow me to enjoy life, and then there's beliefs that says, I am not worthy. If we go outside right now and we look at the buildings, what we will see is the buildings that West Sacramento said yes to. That everyone who was involved in constructing these buildings said yes what you do not see are the buildings that West Sacramento said no to. They do not exist. Energy was not used to create in that way. If you can understand that between us, between us, the dream of the planet, the community that is us, when we say yes, something will be done, something won't be done if I say no, and it, you can see it out there with these buildings. 
that in an internal level, in a personal level, at the root of every belief we have, there is a yes. There is nothing in our belief system that we said no to. We've said yes to a negativity. We've said yes to positivity. We've said yes to these things. If I look myself in the mirror and I see my own reflection, and this is a moment of choice and how I can see life through the eyes of conditional love or the eyes of unconditional love in this form. I see my own reflection. Every judgment is a form of punishment for not living up to our own expectation of what's supposed to be. And I'm saying yes to that, those conditions. Perfection is something that is free from flaws, yet what is a flaw is based on an agreement. So we can see life in these two ways. Our choices are limited to these two things. In one hand, I can see perfection through the eyes of the judge, meaning conditional love. For the reward for living up to an expectation is my own self-worth. I am worthy of my own love if I live up to this expectation, which means every time we do not live up to this expectation, I will judge myself for this flaw. An example. I am Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. I am the son of Don Miguel Ruiz. I don't take things personal. <laughs> I don't make assumptions. I always do my best. And... Oh, yeah. Being impeccable with word. <gasps> <laughs> you know, I don't even know why you guys came here. <laughs> if I create an image of what's supposed to be me, Don Miguel Ruiz, this perfect being, don't take things personal, always do your best, be impeccable with the word, don't make assumptions and be skeptical, but learn to listen. There's the fifth one. <laughs> if I don't live up to this expectation, that self-judgment, that punishment, which means I've turned the four agreements into the four conditions of my self-acceptance or my, the four conditions of my personal freedom. In order to be free, I have to be these four things. Which means if I ever fall short of it, there's the flaw and I can judge myself, punish myself with that self-judgment. And I'm saying yes to it. This is perfection through the eyes of the judge. The expression of conditional love. I love you if. I can only love myself if I finish college, which means from, if I'm a freshman, then that's four years of me rejecting myself until I'm able to say, I graduated college, or I got my money, or I got this wife, or I got this. Never living for the present, always looking for the future for my self-acceptance. It's a great motivator to create based on that condition, like a little carrot that you follow, that you never catch, because it's always changing. It's always continuously evolving. Because as soon as you accomplish that goal, within a minute or seven seconds, or a week later, there's another thing I have to accomplish because life continues. Life didn't stop right there. I continue going and going and going. And if we know to motivate ourselves through that conditional love, then we're always finding that our self-acceptance is somewhere in the future, never in this present moment. But if I have the other choice of unconditional love, this expression of perfection through the eyes of love, or perfection through the eyes of life, life is constantly evolving constantly changing, constantly moving forward. What was truth 
a hundred years ago is no longer the truth now because life has changed. I'm always evolving. I'm always growing. I'm always learning. And because the past doesn't exist anymore, it only exists in my mind. And I can't go back in time to change a decision. Yes, I can think of this should have been, this could have have, or all these things, but whatever, however many of those I give, I will never go back there and change a choice. The future doesn't exist. It's the consequence of the choices I make right now which means the only truth that exists is this very present moment. And this very present moment is the only place I can take action. I can express my intent, which means the only truth that exists is this truth right now. I am perfect because I'm alive. <laughs> and I'm always evolving. I'm always growing. The four agreements from this point of view are just an instrument. I'm saying yes, that's what makes it an agreement. I'll use this like an instrument. Imagine your belief system being a tool shed and you, everything you've ever learned is an instrument that when life is present at that moment and you require this particular tool, you go into your tool shed, you grab it, you use it and you put it back because life no longer needs it, but it's ready for me to use. And at the root of every single one, there is that yes. So the choice comes down when I look at myself in the mirror. Do I love myself conditionally or do I love myself unconditionally? Which means I accept myself for who I am at this very moment flaws and all. It's like that symbol, the yin and yang. It represents that whole. There is good, there is bad. I have the potential of thinking those negative thoughts and I have the potential of thinking those positive thoughts. But overall, it is the whole of me. And at this very moment, it is my truth. And I'm free to say yes to that negativity and I'm free to say yes to that positivity and say no to the negativity. That is my free expression and I can create it, and it's my free will. Who I am, what I am at this very moment depends on how I see myself through the eyes of the judge, of that conditional love, where I'm always judging myself for not being what I'm supposed to be, that image of perfection, or I embrace myself as I am at this very moment. If I haven't learned how to be impeccable with my word, that's fine because that's the truth at this very moment. Or I've got this little belly and my hair stinks out, especially this little one in the middle. <laughs> that's me. This is me. My intent, which is the expression of that yes and no, how I use that energy, is based on this choice. I love myself. And when I say yes to that, and I say yes to loving you unconditionally, saying yes to loving me, saying yes to loving you, I'm saying yes to loving God unconditionally because we are the expression of that love and it is with me with great pleasure to say yes I am worthy of my love at this moment of my most difficult times in the middle of this hardship in the middle of this negativity I am worthy because that is the motivator that's going to mo change me push forward with passion, not because I have to, but because I want to. Change from the point of view of accepting myself is completely different from changing from the conditions of love. When I change based on that condition, 
that carrot is always elusive and I'm changing because I have to. But when I accept myself for who I am at this very moment, change starts where the very first thing is I accept myself for who I am and I change if I want to. And from there, everything is different because I'm always that point of origin and I'm always that ending point. Instead of looking for my acceptance somewhere down the future, if we go back to the example of college, every single step of the way, I am worthy of that love because every moment I am alive. I'm completely alive and I'm free completely free to love with the freedom of life. To me, to you, this is God. This is love. And every one of us expresses in its own way. These symbols right here all represent a different form of that love. But each one expresses love for God because it's the expression of life saying thank you. And love is like having different languages. Each one of the religions speaks the same. You can find that same love. But it always comes down to that choice at a personal level. Do I love myself conditionally or do I love myself unconditionally? The choice will shift the way I see life forever. For as long as I'm alive, everything is possible. And it's expressed by me saying, yes, I will take the step. Thank you. I was just asked to explain the workshop we're about to have after this service at one o'clock. It's a three hour uh, workshop based on the five levels of attachment. The book is based on that question, do I control knowledge or does knowledge control me? And I'm going to use the example of that flower. Awareness is like a flower when it's completely open. At level one, the answer is, I am alive regardless of what I know. At level two, preference. I have an awareness that of my authentic self that I am life. And I will use knowledge as an instrument to survive, to manifest, to create. And when the moment is over, I let go because I never lost awareness. And it goes like this. One and two. At level three, identity. I use knowledge to identify who I am and what I am. But when the moment passes, it's tough to let go because we're right there. At level four, internalization. Knowledge gives me the rules and the conditions by which I love myself and live my life. So I take things personally, domesticate myself. And at level five, when the flower is completely closed at fanaticism, knowledge has complete control of me. Letting go is an act of self-love. And as life progresses, we go up and down, up and down, up and down. But always coming down to that contrast between conditional and unconditional love. The five levels of attachment are an instrument that I can use to become aware of where I'm at at this very moment. And at that very moment, I can make a choice. Do I stay or do I let go? That's what the workshop is about. And one more thing before I finish. Of course, I have to ask my wife what I'm about to ask. But I have to, a favor. Years ago, my grandmother, who's the spirit, who passed away about four or five years ago, she baptized both my son and my daughter. So in the eyes of God, they're baptized. But my grandmother asked me, I want you to find a church 
to baptize him, and I haven't found a single place. I found it. Can you baptize my kids? Thank you, Don Miguel Ruiz.